Okay, so this week we have had so many clients, personal coaching clients, friends, reach out about what the hell, what do I do? I'm six months after this breakup and I'm still mad and hurt and confused and I can't get over it. So we decided that this week we would talk about what to do in a breakup, the most important things that you've got to stop doing and start doing to be able to move through the change and the transition of letting go of an old chapter or a learning lesson, if you will. Hey, we're Britt and Chris Carmichael, and you're listening to the Elevated Life Podcast. Throughout the 13 years we've been together, we've never ceased in our endless quest to better ourselves. We've studied top experts, philosophers, and gurus. After years of personal self-experimentation, we found the tools for shifting your beliefs, moving through fears, and developing a positive mindset. If you're ready for a breakthrough, then you're in the right place because we're here to empower you to take control of your life with simple mindset shifts that create radical transformation. We'll be diving into topics like personal growth, health, philosophy, spirituality, relationships, success, and mindfulness. So create some space for yourself and get comfy. It's time to become the badass you were born to be. Well, breakups are no fun, but we all experience them, whether it's romantic or friendship or even leaving a job behind. There's a sense of loss or grief that comes along with it, and sometimes there's a lot of anger attached, and it's really hard to let go sometimes. So this uh, episode is really geared towards people who are in that feeling of hurt, feeling confused, feeling like, man, why can't I get over this? I, I, I feel like this can't just be like it. I feel like there's a deeper trigger. Like, why is, why is this pattern repeating in my relationships? Gosh, this, this is such an important topic because, and you know, we don't talk about it enough. You know, I think people like to disguise or hide from or push down this type of topic because it, it, it really hurts. Heartbreak really hurts. So if you're going through that, I just want to take a moment to honor you, to let you know that love is definitely something to still believe in. There are still plenty of partners and potential things out there for you. Plenty, plenty, plenty. And I just want to send my hug you know, through, through the audio. I, I hope that you can feel it. I, I'm just, I know what loss is like. And it reminds me, one of my favorite quotes of all time is from Terrence McKenna. And he said that with all the use that he's ever done with psychedelics and meeting shaman and, and going on these spiritual quests, that one thing that he's come down with to, to boil all of it into one phrase is that nothing lasts. Nothing lasts. And it gets so hard for us when we're going through a breakup because what is it that we were really doing when we were with the person? We were relying on them for compliments. We were relying on them for acknowledgement. And doing that, now that that's taken away, we have to fill something else with that void. And typically the easiest thing for us to fill it with is anger. It's so much easier just to see that blind rage, especially if something big happened, like they cheated on you, which I think is almost one fifth of breakups is, is from cheating. So if that's happened and it, it, it comes out of the blue, you're not expecting it. It's like, oh my gosh, my world just got flipped upside down. It's so easy to jump to anger. And what oftentimes anger does is it takes us out of the state where we can begin loving more. And always the answer is to love more. And so to come, to come to anger and to feel that feeling inside you, you have to start exercising that out of you. Yeah, so stopping anger is the thing you must do after a breakup because a lot of the times anger represents something being unfair, which uh, there that may be true in your case, but it's not meant for you to hang on to that feeling and to recreate it and revisualize it. You know, Chris and I always joke and say you'd never watch a bad movie twice, but why do we create these mental movies that take us back to the past, put us in the scenario to help us create that feeling of frustration, anger, loss, or all the all the bad shit, right? A lot of the times people feel depressed after a relationship, well, look at the mental movies you're creating. Are they positive and like, wow, I really learned this lesson. I can't wait to open my heart and take down these walls to let new love in. Hell no. You're putting the walls up. You're like, fuck everybody. No one gets me. I, maybe I feel unlovable. Am I not worthy? And it's so important for you to recognize the difference, like feel the anger when it comes up, but don't keep recreating it. Yeah, you really got to tap into that emotion and let it all the way come up. It's not enough to repress it. 
This is not a, oh my gosh, if you're feeling angry about a breakup, something's wrong with you. Yes, feel that, but don't stay on it. Don't continue to pour that gasoline onto that fire and to let it just really begin to burn through all of your life and through all of the possibilities of you making a better life. What we end up doing is, like Britt said, we recreate that in our next relationship. We're angry, so we focus on what they did, and then what ends up happening is our mind goes out and searches and finds another partner who's going to do the exact same thing because it gets tricked into thinking that what you're focusing on, you want more of. And so if you focus on a person that cheated on you, if you focus on a person that was rude to you, maybe they were a huge narcissist, maybe they emotionally beat you up, maybe it was physical abuse. And if you just focus on that part and how mad you are about that, so often we just bring another one of those exact same people into our lives and then wonder like, what in the world is going on? What's wrong with me? Yeah. What's wrong with me? Why do I keep doing this? And then you start to think, love's not possible for me. And that becomes, now you've gotten into the depression stage where it's it's such a deeper hole to come out of. And so the way that you always get rid of anger, besides exercising through it, and what we mean by that is you have to figure out an outlet for that energy. The energy has to be expressed in some way. You can't just tuck it in your pocket or put it in the closet. You have to actually move it around in your body. So whatever that looks like for you, whatever is, is it running? Is it lifting in the gym? Is it doing some yoga? Is, what, is it screaming? Is it laughing? Is it crying? Whatever it takes for you to move that energy is what you need to be doing as soon as possible. Because the longer you hold on to the anger, the more you're swallowing its poison. Instead of focusing on the anger where we have to shift our perspective to is forgiveness. And that I know is hard because when we're in that breakup stage or a person has been just doing things to us for years and years and years, we get upset because we're impartially mad at ourselves. We're mad because we've allowed them in some way to do that. So we've taken a role in what's happened in our lives. And we're thinking, oh my gosh, I can't believe that. It's, it's easier for me just to be angry. So you've got to start turning on the forgiveness and not only forgive them for whatever they did, you have to forgive yourself too for letting it happen. So not only do we teach about forgiveness in Shine School, but I also have a lesson in there in the cultivating connection part where it talks about your relationships are your reflections. And what you were just saying reminded me of, you know, why I included that. It's because... Every relationship, like Chris said, nothing is meant to last forever. And yes, there will be some that last longer than others. And hey, I hope we take it to the grave, bro. But like most importantly, these relationships come in to reflect parts of ourselves where you're asking yourself, well, is this me? Why is this my fault? It, it's showing you, like Chris said, you're angry because you've allowed something beyond your boundaries. So the lesson to take from, quote, failed relationships is where are my boundaries now? What will I tolerate? What will I not? tolerate. And it helps you to refine what you're looking for. Because as Chris mentioned, what you focus on tends to be realized. So if you're continuing to focus on the problem, you're going to keep creating more problems. But if you ask yourself in that reflection, you know, what did I learn from this? How have I grown? Where can I lay my boundaries? It'll be so much easier for you to smell out the bullshit in the next person that you date. Like, mm, nope, I've been here, done that, not going to not gonna play that game. And every time you say no to that next relationship, we all think, oh, everyone's supposed to be the one, Cinderella, Prince Charming, but that's bullshit. Everyone's not meant to be the one, and we put that pressure on them. So it's important for you to recognize that when someone comes into your life after you've had a breakup, you're most likely a little untrustworthy and a little weary of what's about to go down. But if you come from a, a positive perspective like, I don't need this person to complete me. I'm just here to have fun and to learn new things about myself. Where are my boundaries? What do I want in a relationship and what do I not want? And when you come into a new relationship where you cross that boundary that you've now discovered, it's going to be so much easier for you to let go sooner rather than lingering, which happens in so many relationships. If not years, sometimes decades, they stay because they think they can help someone with the potential that they have in their mind of them, but it's not what's happening in reality. You know, it's weird to think of as you're as you're saying that the picture in my mind came up that everything that we don't like in our lives now is something that at one time we desperately wanted. And so there was a time where you wanted that kind of relationship. And what that really means is that you wanted whatever growth they were going to offer you. Because everything in our lives is for our own personal and self-development. 
and so that we can come out and be the best that we can be. And we only learn that through struggles. We only learn that when our life is in chaos, when it puts us in this rut and we have to climb out of it, because we start to realize that without that, there is no opportunity at all for growth. There is nothing that we can do unless we actually face forward in the lessons. So if you can turn the anger into forgiveness, and then on top of that, if you want to add the cherry on top and take it to the next level, if you can then thank the person for their role that they played in your development, now you're in a different place because you become appreciative. Even again, if it was traumatic, even again, if, if, if they just said the most horrible things, because I'll tell you this, the reason why we forgive people is because most of them don't know any better. Most, most people who hurt people are already terribly hurt. And they were normally hurt by their parents, whose parents also hurt them. They didn't know a better way. Most people just don't know. And they're so afraid of failing at everything. And then here we are in the relationship and we put all of our worth in them. And they're just over there scared as we are, unable to figure out and move through life with any kind of normalcy. And so when you have placed all of your eggs in a basket of someone who themselves is scared and afraid, unable to maybe love themselves, unable to maybe love you, but they're trying at it, but it sucks because they're worried. You've put all of your worth and all of your love in the wrong place. It always needs to come back to you first because then you don't look to them for that fulfillment. Then you realize that every morning when I wake up, I've got to do this for me. If they come along on my journey, that is fantastic. And I want them to be there because love is one of the most phenomenal things in the whole world. It's one of those things that cures so much. But it's hard for most people to do because they cannot accept the vulnerability that comes with it. So you've got to stop the anger and start the forgiveness process. It doesn't happen overnight. It is a journey. You're going to have to move through all the emotions and go through that process of reevaluating. Well, where where did this turn sour or what could I have done differently? Or, you know, how can I have more deeper empathy and compassion and understanding of, you know, why they were acting that way? Or maybe it doesn't make any sense logically and it's irrational, but maybe I can look at it from a higher perspective to see, oh, they were hurt, like Chris had mentioned. Mentioned. Because the only reason when you break up is because you're either not learning or not growing together, or having fun anymore. And that's typically the time when those relationships come to an end. Or maybe it is that you learned the lesson that they were there to reflect back to you. The other thing that we typically have a really hard time doing is fully letting go. We hold on to them because we think that either we can help them, they can in some way help us, someday we'll get back together, someday something will happen. And so we end up holding on to them for forever. And we hold on to the potential to hold on to what the what could have been. And we play these scenarios out in our mind. And the thing that we have to realize is that oftentimes when we go through this type of heartache, when we're going through the breakup, we have to move on and start to picture a different kind of a future. And it's going to be a future without them because if anybody is able to get up and walk away from you, there is nothing that you can do to hold on to them to make them stay. There's nothing that you should do. You don't have to show up for anybody. You don't owe anybody anything. And who wants to be with someone who wants to not be with them? You've got to be excited. You've got the other person has to be excited. That's what builds a phenomenal relationship. That's how you know that the lesson and the offerings that that person can give you are coming to a close because breakups rarely just happen out of the blue. There's almost always some sort of a reason. There's always some sort of a something. And that something is that that chapter is coming to a close. And what you should be doing instead is getting excited about that next new chapter. And so when you're thinking of the next relationship, you're not thinking, oh, they're going to do the same silly stuff that that person did. You're thinking, man, what would I really enjoy in my life? What would that person be like? How would they make me feel? What could I be able to offer to them? And then start working on whatever skill that is. If you're terrible at communication, guess what you're going to need in your next relationship? Better communication. If you don't know how to love yourself that well, you know what you're going to need next? more self-love. So begin immediately to work on that so that other people come into your realm of existence and you can 
start to attract new kinds of partners. You know, it's just making me think like in my head, you know how they say there's an app for that. There's an app for that. I was thinking we have a masterclass for that. We've got a masterclass for that. Effective communication, intimacy, all the things that help you to really rebuild yourself or create better connections with other people. So if you're kind of at that point where you're like, I don't really know what to do. I, I'm willing to learn. I, I'm eager. I want to change, but I don't help, help. I don't know how to YouTube this. Then the Elevated Life Club is your answer. Be sure to check out all the 35 plus master classes that you'll be able to access once you join the club. Oh man. And, and once you start to get it, you know, once you start to really work on yourself and what I mean by that is just stop letting other people do it for you. You know, it, 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 that won't ever happen. No one can go and work out for you. No one can eat the healthy meals. Nobody can do any of that kind of stuff. So no one can love you either in the same way that you need to already love yourself. And once you start working on that, it's amazing the new people that show up. And it's not those same people that you've been dealing with. If you've been dealing with a lot of self-doubt, a lot of depressing thoughts, if you've been feeling that negative way, you've been beating yourself up, you've been letting the other people hear you do that, that attracts a certain kind of person. Because people who are on the rise and people who are really enjoying their lives and people are just so full of joy and excitement and passion, they're always doing these cool things, they're not going to talk like that. It's going to be a new conversation. And so you're going to have to start that conversation off before you get to that part. You're going to have to start that conversation off in your own life before you meet those people. That way you already meet it and you're already ready. It's not like, oh my gosh, I've got to change now. So the complaining, the blaming, the being a victim, the sad thoughts, the love's not for me kind of stuff, you just have to tune that out. You have to just imagine yourself. I mean, just imagine right now that you had a dial that you could turn down and you just turn down all of those thoughts in your head and you would turn up all the times that you really enjoyed life and you really enjoyed relationships and really enjoyed those moments. Maybe it was the first kiss or your first sunset or you saw a movie together or food or vacation or whatever. Turn up those experiences because those are the things that make relationships really blossom. It's those intimate connections. It's the putting your phone down while you're at the dinner table. It's being with that person and allowing them to do those incredible things so you can grow together, but don't hold on to that growth. Do you think we should invite them to participate in the challenge that we're doing in the oh Elevated gosh, Life? Oh my gosh, yes. This would be really powerful. <laughs> I think yeah. so. Yeah. So th- this month in the Elevated Life, every month we do a challenge, some kind of something to get people a little bit out of their comfort zone and just thinking in a new way. And so for this month, it, it's not the normal like 30-day challenge. Well, is we it, normally do 21-day challenge. It, it, is, is seven days because seven days is going to show you what's up on this one. And that is a no complaining challenge. That means for seven days, you do not complain about anything, or at least the moment that you do, because it's a, it's a tougher habit to break. The moment that you do, you just stop yourself. And you can easily stop other people from doing it too. The question I always ask when someone gets into that complain mode and they start telling the same story over and over again. What are you going to do about it? Yeah. Either <laughs> what are you going to do about it or, okay, what's the next step or what's next? Those simple things can turn around negative conversations because it's easy to spiral with other people. They get excited about it. It makes you get excited about it. Everybody's yelling about (laughs) everything. I feel like we're at the Jersey Shore spiraling right now. It's so true, though. (laughs) Everybody gets pumped up about it, and it's easy to go that way and then go home and take that with you or go to work and take that with you, and suddenly you're not doing productive stuff in your life. And so if you just ask them, oh, man, I, I, I understand what you're saying. So what's next for you? It puts them automatically into a solution-oriented frame of mind. And once you start doing that, a lot of the problems start going away, especially more quickly. I mean, think about if you did the opposite of all this. Think about if you stayed mad at your old partner the whole time. Think about if you didn't forgive them, if you didn't have any kind of gratitude. And think about if you didn't just let them go and move on, realizing that they were for a time in your life, and it's great for them to have been there during that time. You stay stuck. And then it just ends up being the story of your life is that these same kind of partners show up and you start feeling the same way. And then love just seems like it's this thing you only see in movies and hear about in books and on TV. You know, it's just like we can have all of those things, but we can't hold on to crappy feelings and have it at the same time. Mm, this is totally inspiring me. I, I just was like looking at you as you're channeling all this beautiful wisdom and it's totally inspiring me to like, you know, get a move on on the couples retreat that we want to do later this year. So many of um, all the girls that come to my goddess retreats, which we're I'm so excited about the upcoming one in Colorado, but so many of them have said, man, you guys, after they see us together in like a week's time, like 
they see us every day, how we interact, how we work together, all the things. I mean, of course, people in our, our personal life see the way that we react or interact together. But a lot of the times you just listening to our podcast, you can hear the way that we talk, but you don't see it in action. And all the girls that come to our goddess retreats are like, oh, my God, you too. What the hell? I want to know what you guys do. What are you doing? How is this working? How? Like, how? 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 <laughs> and so uh, the girls at the last goddess retreat pulled Chris aside and was like, listen, we need a couples retreat. I need to bring my husband to this. So as I was just sitting here watching you just like share your love and wisdom, I'm like also visualizing this couples retreat coming to fruition later this maybe summer, fall time. I think uh, I think it's a hell yes for me. Yeah, it's definitely a hell yes. I, I think that this is probably one that being in a fantastic relationship just adds so much joy to life. Yes. I mean, having having a cool partner, someone that's cool to you, someone that you can just con you know talk to. The, the reason why Britt and I, I knew we were going to hit it off so much is because the first night that we met, we sat in the car and talked for hours. They actually had to come tell us to leave. We were in a in her work parking lot, sitting in the car, and the the security guard ended up having to come up and be like, "Hey, uh, you guys have been here for hours. Like, what what are you doing?" That's how you know. It's because there's that there's that deeper connection, and having a great partner will inspire you to do a lot of things you wouldn't do on your own. Um, and they will inspire you. I've always said Brit adds so much color to my life. I'm definitely more of a black and white kind of person, and in her coming into my life, I mean the way our our place is decorated. I mean just down to all the little bitty nitty de nitty gritty details that that Brit adds. It's just so much more colorful, and there's so much enjoyment, and there's so many things that you can do when you're with someone that that reminds you every morning when you wake up how thankful you are. And having that in your life can do wonders for a lot of things. I mean, not just not just your personal stuff, but your business life too. It, it just gets you back excited again. And I feel like that's the main thing. People who are going through breakups and heartache forget that life is fun. They forget that there's something to be excited about because they're still in that upset mode. And I, I get it. It sucks. I mean, it's to me, heartbreak is heartbreak and, and loss, like loss of a loved one. or Those are two of the worst feelings th that crap. we get. It's just, it sucks. And it feels, oh, but start having fun. Just adding in a little bit of fun to your life while you're going through that will speak volumes. It will help you so much because it will start to remind you that life's not all just this cloud over you the whole time. There, there are going to be super bright, sunshiny days in the future. There's going to be things to look forward to and having that hope and knowing that like tomorrow's, tomorrow's another day, you know, it's, it, it takes time. I totally understand that, but to get back in there, to, to feel like I'm back in the game again, to start looking at people and hugging them and, and feeling to be, like you can be connected with and, and telling people how you feel and realizing that your emotions and what you're going through matters and it matters to other people. Oh, it just feels so good to get back into that. And that's what you really have to begin to be doing. You know, it reminds me of the Chris McCandless quote, happiness only real when shared. Oh, that's such a powerful one. Oh, makes my heart just melt a little. And I'm so grateful to share this life with you and to share our wisdom with our listeners. And, you know, we just are so supportive and absolutely understand where you're at and anywhere in your journey. We have been there, done that. We totally understand. And that's exactly why we offer you this weekly inspiration, just to remind you that life can be a bitch sometimes, but there's always a bright side and it's how you really look at it and how you choose to move through it. So if you're ever in a pickle, ask yourself, what's next? What good can come from this and how can I move forward? Yeah. And just a last reminder, love is possible for you. You deserve to be loved. You also deserve to give your love to other people. So don't for a second think that that's not possible or that that's not, that's not in the realm of what's going to happen in your life. Because you have that attitude, have that, I deserve this. Again, I'm going to send you a big hug. We both are sending out our hugs. We love you. If you have gone through a breakup recently and or just been someone who's held on to a breakup for a long time and not reached out, um, and, and found someone new or gotten back into that self-love, this is the time. This is the time to turn that around. This is the time to realize that we love you, we care about you, and you got this. Yes, we love you so much, and we will see you guys next week. Peace. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Elevated Life Podcast. Want more? 
Join us at theelevatedlifeclub.com for mindset upgrades, lifestyle hacks, and spiritual tools to elevate your soul. Each month features a new masterclass, meditation, yoga practice, and more to help you transform your life one step at a time. Come join the Seven or Above Club.